Dude, someone in chat said not this song again. You're in for a long year if you don't like this song, dude. I'm gonna be honest. Someone may be an official Petrowski song. You know damn well I'm gonna use it. Alrighty though, good morning fellas, how are we doing? What's up, what's up? How are we feeling today? Nothing crazy planned today. I do have, I'm running out of dinner status. So I have around one hour and seven minutes of dinner status left. So it's not gonna be around for much longer. I'm gonna go ahead and just check all of my honey trees to start off the day. I do wanna do them hourly and get used to that. And then after that, I'm, I wanna start doing some more alt account stuff. So I might kind of iron out the two alt accounts I have on the Petrowski account, because then I could actually go ahead and use them for Jimmy runs and use the account box with them, use them for more proper storage, etc., etc. So we'll see how all of that goes. I also maybe we'll hop over to the only shinies account. There's a lot of things we could do today. The only thing that's guaranteed is shiny hunting. All right, here is my honey tree route for those who are interested. I do want to do a full guide on this at some point. This is the guide that I've been following and kind of learning alongside but i usually start from left to right just because that's the easiest way for me i just just how i do it it's easy for me to follow if i kind of do like the bottom left spot down here um head over here there's a really easy honey tree right here that i've started to try to go to every day uh how many encounters is a typical honey tree run i'm not even sure it's around two to three per tree we could just count or something so i had what was it two or three encounters the first tree i think that tree was two so that's like let's, let's say five encounters so far let's just try to track it this time some guy in your discord sniped a shiny charizard for 250k last night i would love to see that screenshot that's unbelievable that's some that's some once in a year that's like snipe of the year type stuff that's nuts what shiny do you think is the ultimate flex there are two ultimate flex shinies in pokemo um, shiny shaman which no one has and doesn't exist so therefore it's the ultimate flex uh number two is secret shiny shininja that's a different different breed of humans that that go for not only one shiny shininja but a secret shiny uh for those who don't know i did a video on this um it takes 17,777 hours on average to go for a secret shiny shininja all right this is the last honey tree check so this will let us know how many encounters we actually got from that route we got three there. That's going to put us at 591. I can't do this math alone. 591 minus 548, I believe, was the starting. So 43 encounters in a, in a full honey tree run. It's really not much, dude. It is not much, but it's honest work. Uh, did you see what happened with Mysterious Premier Balls? I know they got bought out yesterday. Did their markets restabilize? What's going on? Oh, yeah, it restabilized uh, about 20k up. Yesterday it was at like 370k, so it restabilized, but like 20k up from where it was at previously. That's doing pretty damn good. Mysterious Pokeballs, how are we doing? Lowest price, 25. I mean, Mysterious Balls. I have a video coming out on this soon. Mysterious Balls are one of the easiest and best investments you could have made in Pokemon. Yo, thank you for the extra blessed honey Jesus with Nesquik with a name like that. I'm sure that'll have the shiny in them, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, speaking of high interest rates, can we just look at the biggest Petrowski market failure? I like to hype up my wins. The biggest Petrowski market failure of probably of all time. This item has had a 6 million Poke Yen. What is this? 600% price increase in like... Two months <laughs> this thing is insane if you bought these you made out like a bandit how is it how is it still rising that is actually crazy um yeah i sold mine keep in mind i sold mine for 1.5 slash like 1.6 mil and i was like eh i think this vanity is gonna go down and uh i was super wrong what <laughs> what are these insane what this is a wait This guy's name is Sense Win. Sup, I don't play anymore. I always tell people, hey, if you don't play anymore, keep your Poke Yen, okay? I how much po how much is this? Rare candies are like 15k a piece. 
at 16 mil of rare candies. I've never seen, I've never seen a stack like this. 10,000 XP candy XLs. I think like 5k a piece. Oh, 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 what? I mean, so the meme is, holy shit, dude. Um, the meme is, this is the best clip to test whether I'm correct. Just another 70 mil dono. That is, guys, stop, keep your money. I, I always tell you, keep your money. Seriously, keep your money. I, I, I'm fine. I'd rather you progress your account. I'd rather you keep your Poke Yen. I'm doing fine. I don't need it. Please keep your Poke Yen. All right. However, thank you, Senswin. I do appreciate it. This is insane. The coolest part about this is that, uh, yes, raids will take these to the moon. The coolest part about this is I am I'm able to actually like really. I already have been keeping some stuff. I've already been buying, like I bought a bunch of XP charms and rare candies and stuff to make a small investment heading into the race. Cause I've been saying for a while that I believe XP items will go to the, not go to the moon, but I think XP items will rise in price once raids drop because we're gonna need, a lot of people are gonna need to level Pokemon to level 100 for the first time in quite a while. So a lot of XP stuff is gonna go up. For raids, you have to have, a lot of the raids like require your Pokemon to be level 60 or require all six Pokemon to be level 80 or some might require level 100, we'll have to see. Um, so that's, holy shit. Yeah, it's like 70 mil Pokeyen worth of XP item investments. We'll see what happens with that. We'll see if that goes to the moon. Um, super generous of you. If you're quitting the game, please just keep, I appreciate it, but please, I do encourage you to keep your stuff so that you can come back to the game one day um, a lot of people play Pokemon seasonally. A lot of people play the event season, get kind of bored, and then quit. But you a lot, of, but you always come back. Pokemon is very similar to RuneScape. They always say you never really quit RuneScape. You just take long extended breaks. Pokemon is very similar in my opinion. Um, I really believe in like just save enough stuff and enough resources for you to come back to the game, and I really encourage that. But thank you, with the, you know, still. Oh, I'm excited to see how that investment does. That's insane. I will say, someone said, um, I really like Pokemon because I can get on and chill for the most part. I really like games that allow you to play based on how you're feeling. So if you have high energy, you can go do like a high APM fast, you know, thing. And if you're feeling kind of lazy that day, it's like RuneScape, right? If you're feeling high energy in RuneScape, you could go PVM and do a boss or do Slayer or something like that. Or you could be lazy and do like woodcutting or mining or some other. Or you can, feeling high energy, you can do like high energy, mount 3, 2, 4G, like higher effort energies of different skills. So I like that a lot. I wish Pokemon had more high effort slash high energy stuff. I feel like Pokemon is almost a little too chill. Um, and I like chill games. I like chill grinding MMOs, but I do wish that Pokemon had more things that were similar to a, uh, egg hunting. Egg hunting is really, really intense because that one hour, if you've ever egg hunted, you understand making eggs is so so mechanical like with custom strings installed specifically um the race to make as many eggs as possible in one hour becomes an extremely mechanical challenge and a mechanical grind and the difference between the bad players and the and the mediocre players and then like the extremely good players the amount of eggs you'll make per hour is so drastically different and it's all mechanically based um i would love to see more mechanics like that in Pokemon that reward you for putting in high effort and high energy and high APM and allow you to like do things a little faster versus kind of the AFK option. It's nice to have like, when I say AFK, I mean like, when I say AFK, I mean, I, I would call like single encounter hunting AFK. RuneScape players use that term in a different way, which is weird, I know, because AFK means away from keyboard, but RuneScape players mean AFK as in like, oh, okay, you click the keyboard once every eight seconds, and that's like AFK to us, which really isn't what that means, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so I would consider single encounter hunting like pretty AFK because you're just, you're just running back and forth, letting the encounter run for itself and then kind of doing it again, right? It's pretty, pretty brain dead. Um, I would love to see a little more active stuff. It's tough with Pokemon, but I'd like to see more active stuff in general. Maybe we'll see, we're going to see that with raids essentially, but more, more of that kind of stuff is great. I've seen some Pokemon on the market with unknown OT. Are those from someone that got banned? I like that. That's a smart. I like that assumption. Uh, it's not, no, it's not the case, but I, I get how you got to that conclusion. Um, unknown OT is what happens on shiny Pokemon. If you buy two shinies off the GTL and breed them together, you'll get unknown OT. If you 
breed shinies incorrectly let's say that you have a male shiny rapidash right a male shiny rapidash ot and you go buy a female shiny chancy off the gtl right if you breed that the species is going to come out as a chancy but you never caught a chancy so the game won't give you your ot for that it'll give you like unknown ot or like ot star which i believe shows out shows up as unknown ot to other people um you can't fudge a shiny in Pokemon. Like anyone that has a shiny with their OT on it, it means they went through the effort and time to go hunt that shiny in the wild. Even if they like bred it up IV wise, they at one point um, hunted that shiny, which is why the shiny hunting system is so respected and why shinies are so valuable and uh, acknowledged and have such integrity in Pokemon. What's your best and what's your worst shiny rate? I love this question because when you shiny hunt as long as I have, you end up on both sides of the spectrum. Um, I've been like slightly luck unlucky all time, but I've had some really incredibly lucky moments. So I try to just appreciate those. And I, whenever I'm unlucky, whenever I'm dry, like I am on this hunt, right? I just try to look back and appreciate on the times I went really, really, really like wet and like undry as well, right? So my rarest shot, my, my driest shiny of all time, my unluckiest was my first shiny, Stunfisk. And that was an estimated 300,000 encounters dry. I went 2,200 hours in game before getting him. And it took me, I think, eight years. I started playing in 2013. I didn't get my first shiny until 2021. Um, and I played this game a lot for a long time before ever getting my first shiny. And then... But the duality of that is immediately, so my first shiny was 300,000 encounters dry. My times five hordes done fist. My second shiny, literally the next shiny after going that dry was a shiny shuckle in the safari zone at 106 encounters. Like shiny hunting overall should end up evening out. Now it's not always that extreme where you have Turbo unlucky, turbo lucky, back to back. That's Petrowski luck, so we call it here. I'm only either hyper lucky or hyper unlucky. There is no in between. Um, but that was, yeah, that's a great example of they happened back to back. It was extreme unlucky into extreme lucky. Holy shit. Okay, Carabon opened. No way. He opened a shiny melodic from a cherish ball. Dude, congratulations to Carabana. That's crazy. That's that's a really good one to get from from Mysterious Balls. That's insane. Congratulations to him, dude. That's nuts. Uh, my donator status did wear out, so now we have to make a decision. I can either pop another donator status and keep uh, hunting on my main account, or I could hop over to only shinies or hop over to an alt account and kind of make some progress in some other areas. I like to try to really think about that. If uh, my donor status is down on my main account, I want to really think about and process, hey, do I want to keep playing this or I don't want to like, you know, switch it up a little bit. Everybody is kind of saying only, everybody being two people so far saying only shines. I might hop over to only shines. If I'm this dry on the main account, I mean, what are the odds? What are the odds we get to actually start the only shiny series? That would be a huge, huge deal. Yeah, everybody is saying only shinies. Okay, let's just, let's go ahead and hop over. It's a good time for it. Yeah, I wanted to, I really wanted to break this streak. Mentally, it feels good to break this streak before hopping over to a different challenge, but let's do it. All right, for those who have never seen it, this is the only shinies account. This is only shinies two. I actually had to make a separate account for this because when my hard drive died on my last computer, I ended up losing the old one. So I ended up joining creating a new account and I actually picked the correct starter. Um, the rules for this challenge are kind of complicated, but also simple in short. I can't play the game until I get a shiny Pokemon. So I have to sit on route one and run back and forth until I get a shiny Charm Charmander is useless. I will never click an attacking move on him. If I do the challenge is void. Um, so my goal is to get a shiny Pokemon and then release him or put him in the box and never, ever use him ever again. I can only use shiny Pokemon. I can't level up the Charizard to make it easier to run away. I can't do anything, you know, kind of like that. Um, I also can't accept any donations, no shiny charms, no dinner statuses. I can't send stuff over to this account. This is a totally self-sufficient account. I can't use the GTL to buy shinies, nothing like that. Um, people always ask, hey, with your Charmander so low, if you encounter a shiny, isn't it gonna like kill you and you die and then you lose the shot? What you know, what you, don't you, shouldn't you go heal? Yada, yada, yada. Um, no. So the thing is, I'll show you in a quick second after this, after I die. Um, so there's two potions you can grab in early game Pokemon Fire Red or whatever to actually prepare yourself. Uh, there might be a third actually in the PC. There's one from a, a lady on this route, the Pokemart like lady, you can grab there. And there's one 
behind a tree that you can walk around in um i believe viridian city like north of me so i went ahead and grabbed those two potions so i can go ahead and actually use those potions um and yeah, because I can use those potions to uh, to try to give myself the chance to get the shiny. You get five Pokeballs from completing the Oaks Parcel quest at the beginning of the game. And that's how I have those five Pokeballs. You know, I am going to actually go do something I've never done on this account. I'm actually going to go check the PC in my room. Because I don't know if I grabbed that potion. I don't know if there's a potion there. Um, but having a third potion would actually be a huge deal for this account. And hilariously, I haven't thought about that yet. Let's go check. We're in my place. I think you get a potion from this... You see, no? Well, no, I'm interacting with it. I'm getting nothing, so... I guess not. Maybe that's just in the traditional games? And not... Is that feature not in Pokemon? Or what am I... What's the mistake I'm making? I think one positive of this challenge is I think that every single Pokemon on Route 1 can learn Cut, which is hyper-relevant because I'm pretty sure Cut is, like, the first HM you need to continue the storyline, if I'm not mistaken. So that's really important. Pidgey can't, right? Oh, can Pidgey not? I don't think Pidgey can. So Pidgey, okay, so shiny Pidgey would be the scariest one. Fair enough. People are asking like why I have to hunt on Route 1 specifically. The reason why I've restricted myself to Route 1 specifically and not like going over for like a shiny Oddish to the north of Viridian or going over to the left for like a shiny Mankey or a Nidoran, which would be like really good for the storyline. Um, I'm sticking to Route 1 because it is impossible to get a shiny starter in Pokemon. So I feel like the only like genuine, true like workaround or like alternative to like a starter is not letting myself move and being truly stuck to Route 1. Um, that's that's my thoughts on it. Feel free to create your own run or whatever, but that's just kind of my, my process. I love this quote, Tie-Dye, about uh, just like trying to like appreciate shinies and not build up shiny entitlements. Hold on to your spoons and remember them when times get dark. So what that means is spoon is like in a uh, in an MMO or in a game, if you get super lucky, that's called like, oh, like, you know, you got it spoon fed to you, like you're spooned, right? Um, if you get a shiny at, you know, a thousand encounters, like, oh, like you're, you know, spooned, right? Um, I like that a lot. Like I, whenever I get super dry, I'm like, I think of two things. I think of one, I've been drier before. My first shiny hunt was 300,000 encounters, right? And number two, my second shiny hunt, I'm lucky enough to have gotten a Safari Zone Shuckle at 106 encounters. Like, I have been spooned. I think it's really important to uh, yeah, keep in mind both extremes on your, on your current shunt, if you've had them at least. It's tougher when you haven't done enough shunts to have those. The, the more shunts you do, the more acclimated you get to it, and the more you will become okay with being dry. All right, with this encounter, it's going to be 5,900 encounters on the only shinies account and still no shiny. We're going to hop back over onto the main for a little bit. We hunted it for about an hour and a half on this account. I don't know exactly how many encounters I got. They're pretty slow on this account. So you don't have running shoes, but we made some small progress today. We'll take that. Here, someone asked me to go check. You know what? I'm not doing too much. Someone asked me to go check um, what Pokemart Encanto has clothes. So we're going to go do that because one Pokemart in Kanto should have clothing items, but I never know which, which Pokemart in each region has that. So let's fly around to each city really quick. And let's see. Oh, there you go. That was pretty easy. It's Viridian. <laughs> Viridian has uh, all the basic clothing options. The customization stuff in Pokemon has changed recently. I actually did a, I have a video recorded on it, but it's not out yet. Um, this girl can also change your like hairstyle and stuff and do other things. Wait a minute. I've okay, I've been wanting to talk about this on stream. I can't believe I've been I kept forgetting this. I've been wanting to talk about this on stream for like three streams now, and I keep forgetting. I made a secret investment recently, guys. Mystic mirrors. Okay. I bought 12 of them. You see, the thing is with Mystic Mirrors, Mystic Mirror is the new item in game that allows you to change your base appearance, your gender, and your skin tone in game. Allows you to customize your character. And they're only brought into the game from sealed product, right? And there's only been one event housing Mystic Mirror so far. So there's not that many of them in the game and people need them. And I bought, it's crazy, they're already being like bought out. I like, I, we didn't do this right off. I bought my Mystic Mirrors, I think when they were, I think they were 350k, 370k a piece, around that price, I think. It's, it's too, it was too many days ago, I don't think it was in my trade log, yeah. Um, but I bought, I think, yeah, 12 of these for around 350, 370k, and yeah, here we go. This is, they're already paying off pretty aggressively. I'm glad I scouted this out and really saw it popping off, and I just, I think it's a pretty niche item that not people know about, that's gonna have a fair amount of demand, you know? Now. Over time, Mystic Mirrors will become a worse and worse investment as more uh, events happen and as more of them come into the game.
I'm gonna be honest, for whatever reason, I don't know if I didn't sleep well or what happened, guys, but I'm pretty tired today, so I'm kind of low energy, so I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. Still, like, a three-hour stream, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it was fun. Hopefully there was something informative, some mild entertainment in the background. Hopefully, you know, a positive asset to your day, as always. If it was, make sure to like the video. It helps out tr uh, dramatically. Dislike if not, that's totally okay. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon videos. I upload every single day. I stream on Twitch Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET. Discord's down below if you're interested in that, and if you want to go above and beyond and support the content youtube memberships twitch primes twitch subs and paypal slash venmo allow me to be here allow me to stream for longer and allow me to make more guides and more videos thank you all for watching have a great day i'll see you guys later peace arena hey thanks so much for watching the entire video all the way to the end i really appreciate that and i hope it was a positive asset to your day and i also want to quickly say extra thank you to everybody whose name is on this list and goes above and beyond and allows me to do what i do thank you very much have a good one